good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be Harry Muppet, and we are going to be casting game number three of the grand finals of the GA4 SC2 tournament, which was run back in the end of April by the ESL, which does not stand for European Sport League. It stands for Electronic Sports League, but these are going to be European players. Well, at least the tournament is mainly for Europe. I don't know. Whatever. Two really cool guys, all girls playing some awesome StarCraft 2 games and what we've really seen some awesome use of so far is Roach play. I mean basically uh, Zerg player Hyun is basically won the last two games and he's won them with some excellent use of Roaches just massive massive Roach pressure. Now our Terran player Mental King I know it says Shadow but he's actually Mental King he's tried some various approaches to deal with it. In the first game he went for Hellions he just got caught off guard. The second game, he tried to do some Widow Mines, he tried to do bits and pieces, he got some Marine Marauders, he tried to do a drop at one point. He just couldn't, couldn't stand against the massive, massive roach pressure that Hyun was putting onto him. And it's just so hard because when you're so single-minded with the amount of roaches you're sending, you just keep sending more and more and more and more and more and just building up a massive army. I mean, unless you've really, really teched into a hard counter for that, like Marauders or Tanks or something, then you're just not going to have that much luck. And speaking of luck, I think Mental King has just ran out a little bit because he's trying to build a barracks over here. And yeah, it's, uh, it's just not going to work out for him because the Zerg player has seen it. He does know what's going on. This SCV... There we go, he's trying to micro around in the building thing to be able to be in this corner while he's building it. He's not having that much luck because of course you cancel what you're building and then all you can do is click on it, you start building and then you hope that your drone moves around to the other side. And it just, he wasn't getting that much luck here, but we'll see exactly what happens. We've got another worker coming around. He might be able to finish this before the Zerg player can take him out. It all depends on the luck of where this SCV goes. So you can see here, he had some really nice luck getting around that side. Now his luck is starting to go bad again. I think he will be able to finish this barracks though. And with the beautiful placement here, he's going to get that SCV out of there. He's going to produce a Marine. The Marine will stand there. And the Zerg will just have to ignore it for now because there's not really much he can do. A couple of Lings taking out that SCV. Meanwhile, the Terran player getting another barracks here, getting a supply depot, hoping to close this gap off. So there's Lings. They're, they're not going to be able to go in here because that Marine is just going to take him out. He's not continuing to produce Marines here. And that is going to be a mistake because this one Queen is going to take the Marine out. And that pressure was really, I mean... Once the Queen came out, I think that pretty much ended. But he is going to float his barracks away. Maybe he was hoping for a little bit more time. Maybe he was hoping to get a Reaper out or something like that. But he did a little bit of pressure there. He lost a Supply Depot. But he didn't really lose much more than that. So it wasn't a huge loss on his part. And I think he's still going to be alright in this game. Meanwhile, the Zerg player... He, uh, he knows that the Terran just did something hinky and he's going to do a bit of recovery. So he is going for a very large amount of drones at the moment. So he's up to 24 over 18. 25 now. So we should see him develop his economy and potentially tech into roaches again. I'm not sure. He uh, hasn't been showing much variety so far. But given that he won the first two games, I'm not sure that he really needs to. And I'm not sure that the Terran player has an answer for his awesome roach pressure. So, I mean, if it works and your opponent doesn't have an answer for it, I mean, just keep going. Why not? So, we're going to see exactly what the Terran player can do. I'd love to see Marauders. I'd love to see Tanks. But, of course, the Zerg player will scout that out and he'll go for something different um, if he sees that. But, you never know. You can just send all the Marauders and Tanks to the enemy army. Just wipe out the base. You know, it's all good. So, there we go. That barracks finally flying back. He's seen a lot in his day, he's done a lot, he was out there on the fringes when it was still cool to be out there on the fringes and now he's going to go back, he's going to take up a desk job and he's going to continue working hard like the rest of the Terran army. Now here we go, 
I always like this little bit, the little thing popping out of there. That's very cool the way they do that. Because it's like, how did that huge dish actually get out of that building? But it actually shows you why you're building it. But of course, I've missed both of them now, so we may have to pay attention. But no doubt when the third one is coming out, there will be something much more interesting to watch at that stage. Speaking of stuff that's interesting to watch, we have about 9 to 10 lings. A couple more coming up there. They're going to go for a harassment. It's not much they can do, although if he's, uh, if he's not paying attention to his supply depots, although this, this amount of lings, this is scary. And look at the banelings going on. Does he have baneling speed? That's the question. I wouldn't have thought he had baneling speed at this point. Where is the baneling now? I can't even see the goddamn baneling. There it is. It's up there. Anyway, he's going in there. He's getting all these banelings. Trying to get the banelings close to the bunker, maybe. But no, instead he's going to go in. He's going to take out that supply depot. Bunch more links coming in here. <coughs> and this, this is not looking good for our Terran player. He's going to scatter the workers away, but some of them go the wrong direction. And the Banelings are just chasing them. He's got to do the best split of all splits here to save these guys from the Banelings, but I don't think he's going to be able to do that. These SCVs just don't know what to do at the moment. And yeah, look at that. There's even more Banelings just morphing out of there. He's got some Hellions, which are not bad versus the Banelings, but there's just so much going on here. And I would not be surprised to see the GG in the next few minutes from the Terran player. He just got absolutely molested in this game. Five workers to 32. I don't think there's any way that he can come back from this, uh, this devastating attack that the Zerg player has inflicted on him. So we'll see exactly what happens. Are we going to see... There we go. There's the GG from Mental King. So Hyun is victorious, and I do believe this is a best of five series. So definitely, definitely an excellent game there from Hyun. And yeah, I mean, Mental King just, uh, he may have been expecting the Roach push, but instead he got a Ling and Baneling push. So he just uh, wasn't really expecting it. Had a very hard time dealing with it, and just the sheer number of lings. There must have been 30 or 40 lings at one point, and just uh, 10 or 12 banelings constantly reinforcing the baneling numbers by morphing them in on site. And it was just really a hard, brutal hit from Hyun there. And he has won this series, so congratulations to Hyun for winning the April tournament of the G04 SC2 Cup. Uh, organized by the Electronic Sports League, that's the ESL. And thank you very much for watching me, Harry Muppet, casting the finals games of these tournaments. And if you do like these tournaments, and if you do like me casting them, then by all means, let me know, and I will continue to do so. They bring out one every month, so I probably will get the one from next month. And we'll see how it goes, but we'll... Uh, We'll have to see if I get these videos at all, out at all because my modem is just uh, not connecting to the internet at all. It, it had a problem where it wasn't even connecting. I think it might be connecting now. I just turned it on again. But we'll see if it gets off your ass and actually connects to the internet. But we'll see. Thank you very much for watching. And this has been Harry Muppet. There was actually a fourth game in this, um, in this replay pack from these two guys. So I may have a look and see what that is. And I probably will cast it as well. What I'm going to do is actually, uh, I'm going to do something called a, I can't remember ex what the exact name is. I got the idea of HD StarCraft, who did it in one of his tournaments many years ago when StarCraft 2 first came out. Basically, it's a spoiler-free video, so if you say at the start of the tournament, alright, we're looking at a best of five series, and then you only see three videos for that series, you know, alright, whoever won game one are also going to win game two and three. So I'm going to put out a couple of spoiler-free videos and disguise them as games 4 and 5 and I don't know what I'll put in there but I'll check out this fourth game and we'll see exactly what that is it's possible that it is a best of 7 I really don't know the replay pack didn't actually say and I really should do my research because I'm absolutely horrible at that sort of stuff but regardless we are going to go into the next game um, the replay pack actually said he won 3-0 so if, somebody, if it is actually a best of 7 then somebody mislabeled it but that's fine. We are going to go ahead and we are going to have a look. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Harry Muppet and I hope you enjoyed it.